I would like to thank you very much for making time and uh, participate in this online training activity. Uh, the training focuses on uh, innovative digital solution for the assessment of 21st century skills in makerspace settings, formal and non-formal. Um, we have with us today teachers from Greece, Ireland, Cyprus and Sweden. So a very warm welcome to, to you all. Uh, hope you will enjoy this three day training activity and that you will make the most uh, out of it. A few words about me. Uh, I'm Renée Alimisi, uh, Project uh, Manager in Learning Technologies at the Dumotiva European Lab for Educational Technology, uh, which is based in uh, Greece. Actually, this uh, training activity has been originally planned to, planned to take place face-to-face uh, -face in our premises in Athens. Um, so if things were different with uh, COVID, we would uh, be very happy to welcome you in uh, our makerspace in Athens. Uh, but the COVID situation uh, is what it is, obstructed this uh, plan. Uh, so here we are online in Zoom, but we're very uh, happy that we host uh, this, uh, this event, this training activity. A uh, few words about uh, this uh, three days training. Um, today we are going to uh, focus on the theoretical framework of our educational initiative. And I will, uh, I'll go through the agenda for today in a couple of minutes. Uh, tomorrow, the, um, the focus will be more on the digital solution uh, itself. And you will have the opportunity to do some hands-on practice with uh, the tool that we have designed. Um, we will guide you through, through this process. Wow. The last day of our training is dedicated to further practice. And of course, your feedback. We are very eager to hear your experiences, your comments, your concerns, and to see how this can uh, update and improve our work. So uh, here you can see the agenda for today. Um, with us today is Deidre Green from Learnovate, uh, who is going to give you a, an overview of the Assessmake 21 project, uh, in the context of which this activity is actually taking place. Uh, we have with us uh, Dimitri Salinesis from Edumotiva, who is going to go through the basics of maker education, maker spaces and maker activities. Um, then uh, Yanis Berdusis from Edumotiva is going to talk about 21st century skills and how these are reflected into making practices. And by the end of the day, um, with the support of Maria Damo and Andrea Skits is from Cyprus Interaction Lab, uh, you'll get an insight into the design process of the AssessMake 21 tool. Uh, finally, uh, Ian O'Keefe from Learnovate will make sure that you can access the tool and will provide you with important technical information. Uh, during these two uh, hours, uh, you will be invited to take part in two, two uh, tasks in breakout rooms, but I'll tell you more when time uh, comes. And without further ado, I, I would like to hand over to, to Deidre Green from Lernovate. So the floor is, is yours, Deidre. Thank you, Rene. Um, I'm going to share a presentation now just uh, around the project itself, the SSMA 21 project, um, and talk you through that. So hopefully everyone can see, see that. Yes, yes, yeah, looks, looks fine. Good. Okay. So the, the assessment project is, um, it's a two year long project and it's funded by Erasmus plus European funding. Um, and it involves uh, the, the partners who are uh, here on the training with you today. And, and most of you will be in contact with your partner in your particular country. So the, the project, which started uh, 
last year. Um, what's it about? This is a word cloud made up from the proposal that we sent in. And you can see some of the keywords there, maker spaces, skills, assessment, learning. Um, the, the point of interest that we started with really was that question around um, maker spaces and 21st century skills, both of which we are recognizing um, interest in and use of as has grown. Um, so maker spaces are are then their use within education um, is growing across Europe, particularly in the area of STEM education um, and science and technology education. At the same time, um, there's been a, an increasing recognition of the, the need for 21st century skills, such as collaboration, communication, um, and the, their development. And that recognition has also led to them being more um, incorporated into formal education and curricula, um, as they are in the Irish system, for example. So there is this anecdotal evidence that um, maker spaces are a really positive learning environment in terms of the development of the 21st century skills. Um, but there isn't um, a way to really confirm that. Um, um, and there's also a sense that if we can confirm that in some way, that will be a very positive thing for maker spaces and will help with that discussion around further integration and scaling of maker spaces and their use for education. So that was a point that we were starting the project from. Um, and with that in mind, um, and with a, a belief from the, the wider partner group that it is the case that actually these are good uh, learning environments for that 21st century skill development. Um, we looked at the objectives of this project overall is that if we can work towards uh, a way of recognizing those skills happening within those activities, um, we're going to be able to help the teachers and the facilitators working uh, with the students in this way um, helping to give them evidence of that 21st century skill development it'll be also of positive benefit to the students in that they'll be able to to recognize those skills and their own strengths in those skills and at a more long-term potential impact for this is that it will as I said, uh, feed towards that scaling of the maker movement, um, because it's a, if that question can be answered and that proof can be can be brought to it, it becomes part of the conversation around discussions such as um, uh, policy or funding decisions around maker spaces and education. So that point of, of moving that integration of maker spaces forward. Uh, and this is the group of partners that uh, Renee has uh, introduced herself and Edge Motiva, and they're running the training event this evening. We have um, partners from across four countries, uh, Sweden, Cyprus, Greece, and Ireland. So I'm from uh, the Learnovate Centre, which is located in Trinity College, Dublin, and we're uh, a research centre focused on learning technologies. We're coordinating the project overall, but obviously working closely with this um, partner group, we're all taking different areas within the project itself. Um, and you will have worked with, with them from the particular country you're coming from, you're going to have connected in with your, your country partner because they're um, facilitating the pilots in their different countries. Um, one other Irish partner that we worked with particularly was at Dublin Maker, which was located in the Dublin City University. And that was a project being run there to help facilitate the creation of a community in terms of making and maker spaces in Dublin. And they really helped us to connect with that maker community in Ireland. Um, so in terms of what the project itself is planning to, to do, um, to output, a key output is obviously the uh, digital tool for the assessment of and self-evaluation of 21st century skills, which is um, part of the focus of the, this three-day training and what we're going to be piloting. Um, so prior to this project, Learnovate had worked in this space already on a project called Skill Track, and you'll see a screen grab of that um, the output of the digital tool from that project there on my screen. And uh, that was also looking at 21st century skills and the assessment of them. In that case, it was a more formal classroom context. So um, for this project, we brought those outputs and that tool and it was re-examined and looked at how that needed to be updated or adapted, particularly for this context in terms of maker spaces and the students working in that environment. Um, and that was work that, um, that Zill did in terms of that re redesign. And they'll be talking um, about that at a later point in the training. We're also, there's also the creation of the, the educational resources, which um, 
uh, will be uh, part distributed along with the training resources here. And with the piloting of the tool, which is the next key activity, um, we're going to be doing an evaluation report and the finding and results from that is going to be a key output again of the projects. We'll be communicating that and disseminating that and, and sending that on to the, for those discussions around the decisions around makerspaces, but also for teachers and makerspace facilitators in general in terms of how they can use this tool and how it can help them in terms of that assessment. So you'll see in terms of the activities that we're down at that right now, we're at that second last bullet point, we're at that training event happening in September 2021. We've worked through those other activities in, in the project and we're moving on to that piloting activity, which you're obviously all um, involved and engaged with. And I just wanted to, to finish by saying a big thank you to everyone for um, being involved both in the training today, but also for that uh, willingness to be involved in the pilots. And uh, it's so important for the project for us to get a chance to, to have the tool to be used in that real world context and for us to um, gain the insight from that and from your use of it with, with your students. Um, and we have a number of of questions that will help us to, to find answers to and to have um, learnings around it that we can then um, move forward and bring that to the wider context of this discussion around how makerspaces as a positive learning environment um, are also places that allow that development of those key skills. So. Thank you. Uh, I'll stop sharing there and return you to the Rene. Thank you so much, Deidre. Um, uh, Deidre uh, gave you a, a, a brief uh, uh, overview of, uh, of the project and what we aim at um, uh, reaching. Um, I would like now to invite uh, Dimitri Salimetsis from Edumotiva. Um, uh, he's going to guide us through the basics of uh, maker education. Uh, Dimitris, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, René. Uh, this is Dimitris Salimisis from Edumotiva, Greece speaking. Uh, happy to join all of you in this uh, interesting uh, event uh, for the AssessMake21 project. Uh, the topic of uh, my short presentation is uh, Maker Education. A new paradigm in education. Uh, Deirdre has already introduced uh, the importance of maker uh, uh, movement and maker spaces in education. I, I will continue uh, on this topic. Uh, this is uh, this will not be a detailed lecture. Just uh, uh, and uh, I will try just to set the context for what will follow in uh, this training course today and the next two days. Uh, well, the maker movement uh, is uh, a, a new trend that has uh, gained momentum in recent years in uh, education, uh, placing uh, students uh, at uh, uh, the center of, of uh, learning, uh, transforming learners to creators uh, or makers of things in uh, a maker space. Uh, and uh, it, this is actually a return to the uh, do-it-yourself ethos in which physical and digital tools are blended uh, for uh, personal uh, favoring personal creation in the form of passion projects as part of uh, a broader maker uh, uh, community. Uh, the maker movement is centered on ideas of open exploration, personal interest, and uh, tinkering founded on uh, a belief in innovation. Uh, the maker movement nowadays is uh, assimilating into school-based uh, settings, uh, creating uh, a, a dedicated space uh, called uh, maker space or hacker space or fab lab, 
uh, that uh, uh, promotes the freedom for learners to explore, take risks, and create. It brings about a natural interest in learning that combines contractivist traditional uh, traditions with uh, the modern technology. Uh, the maker movement has manifested uh, uh, itself into the creation of sites of innovation uh, called maker spaces. Simply put, a maker space is a place where you can make uh, uh, things. Uh, maker spaces uh, uh, come in all shapes and sizes but they all serve as a gathering point uh, of tools, mentors, and expertise. Uh, however, a collection of tools does not define uh, a maker space. Uh, rather, it is defined by what it enables, making. Maker spaces are community-oriented workshops that engage learners in uh, problem solving, hands-on design and construction. Uh, finally, Maker Spaces provides kids with a variety of tools and materials and the freedom to create. Uh, Maker Spaces is one lab, uh, including multiple spaces. Uh, uh, you can find in uh, Maker Space uh, different rooms, including space for ideation and planning an area where the young learners can discuss their ideas and plans for their projects, uh, create and develop areas to make, for instance, electrical uh, circuits, uh, to practice uh, with their artifacts uh, and uh, create uh, their own uh, 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 projects. Uh, space for crafting. Hands-on crafting tasks are uh, integral parts of the making process. Students uh, have access to a space with a variety of crafting tools and materials uh, and uh, a table for practicing crafting. Uh, a space for programming with access to laptops, tablets, and uh, smartphones uh, for programming work. Space for robotics with uh, access to a variety of robotic kits and uh, a representation area where students can showcase their work. The idea of this wall of fame is uh, to inspire other students uh, to develop their own ideas or extend the ideas of, uh, of other students. And uh, finally, sharing. Uh, opportunities, offering opportunities uh, for sharing, uh, not only between, between uh, the members of the local maker spaces, but uh, uh, globally through uh, web channels, uh, social media, and more. Uh, this is a, a, a typical plan of a maker space. I don't uh, recommend it as the ideal plan. This is uh, uh, an indicative plan where you can uh, see uh, different uh, corners. Uh, for instance, uh, for uh, uh, the idea lounge for the ideation and the planning, I mentioned before, uh, corners for tinkering, for storage, uh, for woodwork, uh, for 3D printing, metal work, and, and uh, more. Uh, of course, uh, uh, what uh, uh, corners, what uh, uh, rooms uh, uh, will uh, be included in your maker spaces uh, uh, depends on uh, the available equipment, depends on the interests and the needs of uh, the local uh, community. Uh, this is a, a photo from the previous uh, plan uh, realized uh, in uh, 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 Technical University of Graz, Austria. Uh, you can uh, see uh, this is not uh, the typical classroom. This is uh, uh, very different from what uh, you can see in a typical school class. Uh, there are the different corners I mentioned. There are students uh, 
working in different uh, uh, rooms. Uh, there are uh, uh, students talking to each other, ideating or planning or practicing. Uh, there is some mess, yes, but uh, the, uh, I imagine this is a lively, a vivid uh, uh, learning uh, place. And this is a picture from uh, the eCraft to Learn Makerspace, a makerspace we created uh, uh, three years ago in Athens uh, in the frame of uh, an Horizon project, eCraft to Learn. You can see here uh, young students sitting around a table, small teams of three, four. And uh, you can see uh, the facilitators, our facilitators, moving around, uh, helping discreetly the young uh, learners or sitting next to, to them. Uh, what do we mean by maker activities or projects? Uh, every maker spaces is uh, unique and the projects that are worked on inside of them uh, are diverse. Uh, I mentioned here just some of the things you can do in a makerspace. Uh, coding, 3D printing, laser cutting, soldering, electronics, uh, including micro, use of microcontrollers like Arduino, uh, robotics, uh, learning circuits and electricity, uh, even sewing and woodworking. Again, uh, what activities will be uh, developed in uh, makerspace depend on the uh, interests uh, interest and needs of uh, uh, the participants and, of course, on uh, the available uh, equipment. Uh, here, uh, here are some indicative uh, projects, maker projects. Uh, you can find uh, more about them in uh, uh, our website at dumotiba.eu. Uh, you can see the do-it-yourself automobile uh, built uh, on an Arduino board, uh, the lighthouse project, uh, the sunflower project, the 3D printed pen holder, the smart light, the alarm system, interact paper models, and more. Just to give uh, you an idea what we mean by maker projects or activities. So, uh, I will uh, conclude with some uh, tips uh, I consider as important for uh, educators uh, working in maker spaces. Uh, tinkering is, is important. Uh, don't rush to, to make uh, uh, a predefined product or, or project. The, the process uh, is more important than the final product from a learning perspective. Ask frequently questions, uh, what happens if, to trigger uh, curiosity and imagination of uh, your uh, learners. Uh, the arts and crafts model. Uh, we believe that this is a, a valuable model to, to be used in, in, in maker spaces. In a project, in the eCraft Learn project I mentioned before, we have seen young children working enthusiastically with the creative uh, do it yourself robotic uh, automobiles uh, and other artifacts from scratch using low cost and the recycled materials. We argue for technologies that uh, stand for creative material, offering a design which provides hands-on material for children to manipulate, think with, and act upon as creators. The arts and crafts model allows children to unbox, deconstruct, and trigger their curiosity and facilitate collaboration, ensures transparency and visibility of tools and materials, and helps children understand how the technology works. Then, uh, technologies uh, for professionals and hobbies or for learners. Uh, professional technologies, when uh, introduced in classrooms or maker spaces for novices, may cause difficulties and eventually frustration and discouragement because they presuppose uh, a domain knowledge 
for example, electronics uh, uh, skills such as soldering, uh, circuiting, uh, C coding, etc., that uh, young uh, learners and novices are unlikely to possess. Moreover, the producers of technologies for professionals uh, focus on uh, uh, to do the job fast and at low cost. They don't care much to help users understand how the product works. This often results in the so-called over-designed technologies, which essentially stand for black boxes for children, hiding how the product actually works. Uh, then scenarios from everyday life or missions to Mars. Uh, we argue for scenarios from everyday life. Exotic scenarios inspired by fiction movies or popular TV shows are often proposed uh, to uh, uh, excite the children's interest. For example, uh, industries advertise uh, a spectacular robots uh, ready for space adventures, which sound exciting, uh, but have nothing to do with children's everyday lives. The, the, there is a, 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 a risk here uh, that this uh, uh, sort of marketing may result in the mystification of technology and promote misconceptions for children how technologies uh, work. Uh, finally, uh, the cost uh, matters. Though less directly connected to learning and cognition, the high cost of uh, technologies may be an inhibiting factor for schools, educators, uh, and uh, families. Our experiences so far have shown that low cost kits, if combined with materials from uh, everyday life and the recycled components of, uh, for example, broken toys, can offer creative solutions and higher educational value uh, than uh, expensive ready made uh, robot or kits that allow children just to assemble a limited number of predefined uh, models. Uh, I would uh, recommend for further reading uh, a book uh, published in 2016, available in two volumes online in, uh, in printed and ebook form, uh, Makeology, which uh, uh, offers uh, interesting papers, uh, uh, both for researchers and for uh, practitioners. Uh, uh, Practical uh, examples for educators in maker spaces uh, to implement in uh, and uh, theoretical uh, support for uh, the work done in maker spaces. Uh, then uh, you might be interested in my recent papers uh, where I try to uh, explain how the maker culture, the maker movement uh, might uh, be, can be introduced in robotics education. Uh, the second one, Technologies for an Inclusive Robotics Education is open access. Uh, finally, the Inbots curricula in the frame uh, of uh, an Horizon project named Inbots, uh, the Edmotiva team has developed uh, curricula and open educational resources freely available for teachers and educators. Uh, uh, what is interesting here is that uh, uh, we have tried to uh, show uh, how the maker uh, culture, uh, the uh, maker movement can be integrated in robotics education. Uh, you can find the curricula for element, early elementary school of primary school education and secondary school education. They are not full the curricula, they are indicative uh, and ind indicative work to serve as uh, a, a, hopefully a good practice, a good example for teachers and educators. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, happy to receive a comments or uh, uh, questions uh, in my mail or through chat. Uh, I pass now again the, the, the word to René to continue the, the schedule, the, the agenda.
Thank you very much, uh, Dimitris, for your presentation and the issues that you raised the, and the resources that you um, provide us with. Um, uh, okay. Um, So uh, I think that uh, the, uh, your presentation smoothly uh, brings us to the first task that we have uh, for, um, for the teachers today. Um, as uh, Dimitris mentioned, uh, the makerspaces embrace the do-it-yourself culture, uh, which is uh, a vital aspect of uh, making. Um, but um, recent study shows that the do it together uh, um, culture is also significant. Uh, and sometimes either is not sufficiently, sufficiently boosted in makerspaces or implemented in a, in a wrong way. And I'm referring to both formal and non-formal uh, makerspaces. Um, the do it together culture does not mean uh, forcing the students to work together. It neither means pushing everyone to do the same uh, maker activity, the same making project. Um, in a way, uh, we should encourage uh, its makers initiative and creative inspiration, ensure, ensuring that this is taking place in a collaborative making uh, context. Uh, so yes, teamwork is highly valued, but it is equally important to ensure that uh, the students are engaged in uh, projects that are real, relevant and meaningful uh, to them. They reflect their personal interests, uh, their personal, their preferences, their learning uh, styles. Uh, so uh, the question for you uh, is how the do it together culture can be meaningfully enhanced in a makerspace context, and you can think of your makerspace context. Um, let me give you some practical guidelines on how we're going to work on this task. Uh, we will create uh, three rooms, three breakout rooms, and you will be transferred to these uh, rooms uh, very shortly. Uh, you will have approximately 12 uh, minutes to exchange uh, thoughts and ideas around this question. Um, there are no wrong or right answers. You can freely express your, uh, your thoughts. Uh, the discussions in the breakout rooms will not be recorded. Um, before the closure of the breakout room, you will uh, receive a notification uh, something like you have one more minute before the closure of the break room, something like that. Uh, someone from the room or the room moderator will bring the key points of the discussion to the plenary. Um, uh, this person will have uh, something like two or three minutes to summarize uh, what was discussed. Uh, so we will have three rooms. Uh, room one under the discrete uh, moderation of Yanis. Uh, Maria will take care of room two and Richard of room three. I don't know if there are any questions. Uh, if not, I'm going to assign you randomly in, the, in these three rooms. In case you face any problem, you can always communicate this to the moderator or you can always ask for help. There is a button there that you can press and, and I can join the, the room. Uh, so, okay, I think we are ready to go. I can create this, uh, these rooms now. Okay, welcome back. Hope you had uh, constructive discussions in the breakout rooms. Um, so, uh, who would like to start uh, a representative from room one to guide us through, um, to walk us through the main um, um, points raised there? Yes, Rene, that's me. 
Uh, so we talked about the uh, task one there. We had uh, uh, some uh, useful insights in, the, in this task. Uh, we think that the uh, teamwork uh, is uh, crucial and essential, but the uh, students uh, need uh, guidance from the facilitator or the uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, in order to be creative or to create the teams, to build the teams, in order to create a bond between the members of the teams, an actual bond between the members of the mm -hmm. teams. Uh, some uh, pedagogical issues came up, such as the choice of the teams, uh, the choice criteria uh, that uh, will form the, the team uh, in a makerspace. How the team was formed, right? Yeah. Uh, actually, the teacher, the facilitator, uh, may have the key role there to form uh, teams that can work together, and uh, each member uh, will uh, uh, post the expertise and uh, the interest in the, mm -hmm. in the work. Uh, we said that uh, teamwork does not mean that everyone has to do everything. Mm -hmm. uh, have to uh, break its project down so its member uh, will uh, do what he or she can according to the expertise on the interest. So we have to divide up uh, the work, uh, create a bond so as the members of the team appreciate the work of the of their teammates of their teammates and uh, inspire one uh, another. Mm -hmm. Uh, of course, according to the equipment that the makerspace has, uh, the teams can be uh, formed, and uh, in a sense, it can um, form uh, the, the groups that uh, the teams that uh, are going to be created in the in the makerspace based on their interest in using specific tools. Based, uh, actually, uh, yes, and uh, mm -hmm. the available equipment. Uh, to the makerspace. Thank you so much, well, Yanis. That's our thoughts for this uh, do-it-together culture. Thank you so much. Since you had a, a nice discussion in uh, in room one, what about in room two? Yes, Ernest. So um, I was the moderator in room two. The teachers had a really nice. Uh, discussion again about the do it together and they shared their experiences about their uh, maker context. Um, teachers told us that teachers um, discussed that some students prefer to work together and others alone, mm -hmm. but they are, uh, this is based on the project that they have. They are always encouraged to work together um, and this will enable knowledge sharing among the students. Um, this is also very interesting to happen among different age groups. Uh, so, true. of course, this depends on um, uh, on the context. If they are in a formal uh, in a formal context, uh, this is very difficult to do so. But in non formal um, maker spaces, um, this is uh, the norm. So mm -hmm. students are encouraged to work together. They uh, they share tools, they share knowledge, they share experiences, and uh, the teachers are encouraging this uh, through um, collaborative uh, work. Um, another another thing that caught my um, caught my attention was that everyone who is coming into a makerspace uh, or a making activity is an expert, so everyone has to share something and. Um, and teach something to someone else. So everyone, everyone's ideas are valuable. Um, of course, there is hierarchy. This depends uh, even from, from the age or from the member, uh, from the, um, uh, let's say from the role of, of, uh, of a member in the group. Um, of course, having a compulsory, another teacher said, having a compulsory maker class in, um, in the formal education, in, in the formal um, context, is good to mix students from different age groups. And 
they can be they can filmmakers or they can have other skills and they can and this brings um uh, this brings other skills like 21st century skills mm -hmm. in the mix um yeah so yes we also discussed that this is also very challenging to do so especially because of the limited resources and infrastructure again de depending on the context that uh, that we have but yes the limited infrastructure in uh, in maker spaces and in schools in general is um is limiting this um uh, this culture of do it together yes that's it from room two Brenda. thank you so much maria an update from room three Richard? hello yeah we had an interesting discussion uh some some nice uh, points made um i suppose the the first point that was made was that you know the teacher is the facilitator um it's ultimately the students who are dictating the work and who are setting the pace of the work and who are, I suppose, getting assigned a goal and just trying to get towards it. And what's most important is that they're, they're working together and they're utilizing different skills. Um, so, and within that then, I suppose you have the dimension of peer-to-peer -peer guidance and peer-to-peer -peer collaboration um, that students within the group are, I think like Maria said, that they're encouraged to show off their individual skills so that it's not just that they're a group and there's no like personal identification in it, that students are encouraged to be themselves in the group and bring their own strengths and personality to the group and not only you know, get towards the goal, whatever the goal may be, but also to teach the other people in the group things that they might not know. So everyone is an expert, as Maria said, and that uh, they all have their own skills, which they should share with each other throughout the process. Um, and yeah, groups who are stronger than others should be encouraged to help other groups as well. So that's another dimension of the, the collaboration aspect. Um, uh, I think it was Andre who made a really good point about how, like, forming groups, which is something that was mentioned before by uh, Yanis. I think that, you know, uh, maybe it's not a good idea to prescribe uh, a project or prescribe groups to students that maybe they should be allowed to brainstorm initially to find out what their their interests are and to sh and to then group with people who have common interests or who have common um uh yeah common interests so that they can work together on something that they're all interested in and um, that could be one way of approaching certain maker spaces it may not be the best in all of them so allowing students to brainstorm uh first before they decide what to work on and then that brings out the spirit of collaboration from within rather than from the, the, the teacher prescribing it. And yeah, the final point was about just, you know, we've always kind of lived in a do it together uh, culture since the internet started. And even in the days of like YouTube tutorials, it was always kind of do it together because someone was kind of showing you how to do something. And that spirit should be kind of brought forward into the, the maker space that you're all kind of teachers and students. And yeah, it's the do it together culture yeah so yeah i think i covered everything there that's great uh, that's great richard thanks so much uh, uh, great job in the breakout rooms <laughs> uh, thank you all for the updates thank i would like to thank all the teachers for your thoughts and uh, reflections on uh, on this uh, question um, uh, it is important that uh, that we started reflecting on this matter and uh, all the ideas that uh, were um, uh, brought forward, uh, I think, were uh, in respect to the makers' initiative, uh, the makers' preferences and interests. Uh, I really uh, like the idea uh, of seeing collaboration uh, between students, between students and uh, teachers, uh, between group of students, and uh, open it uh, also up to the um, to the community. Um, 
uh, it is uh, it is important to to offer uh, room for this personal engagement, this uh, knowledge knowledge exchange between uh, the the young makers. And, uh, and in the end, I think it is uh, this uh, uh, personal engagement in a, in a, in a project that uh, brings the students uh, closure, uh, closer to fellow makers, uh, closer to their uh, teachers and coaches and facilitators and, and connects them uh, to the, to the making, uh, making community. Uh, and of course, uh, social media cannot uh, be out, out of this uh, this context. So thank you all for your uh, for your uh, reflections. Um, let's proceed with the presentation. Um, there was a reference to twenty first century skills in your feedback, uh, uh, and I think that is. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that, that is um, in line with the, the next presentation. Um, I'm gonna hand you over to Yanis Berdusis from Domotiva now. Yanis is going to uh, tell you more about 21st century skills and the need for assessment in makerspace. So the, the floor is yours, Yanni. I will stop sharing my presentation. Uh, give me a minute. Thank you, Rene. I'm going to share my presentation. Give me a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me share it. Okay. Uh, so let's take a quick glimpse at the 21st century skills, uh, having uh, always in mind that uh, we will discuss them in the context of the makerspace. Uh, so a set of essential skills for the successful journey of young learners in the today's world uh, have been recognized through numerous frameworks today. Uh, actually, these skills are a blend of uh, specific skills, uh, expertise, and uh, literacies that are necessary for learners to succeed in the work uh, in life. Uh, in the work uh, in the work cloud, in this uh, slide, you can take uh, uh, an idea about uh, those uh, skills. Uh, the skills known as uh, the 21st century skills are uh, recognized as the, as the key skills necessary in the core place of the 21st century. So uh, when referring to those skills, keep in mind that several, especially soft skills are included. So some of these skills are uh, citizenship, collaboration, communication, creativity, critical thinking, uh, global awareness, ICT literacy, personal and social responsibility and problem solving. Uh, so for this presentation and uh, in the context of the Assessment 21 project, we, we will focus just on a set of five skills, namely collaboration, creativity, uh, problem solving, life and social skills and uh, communication. Uh, we will very shortly explain how this choice was made and uh, why we selected those five skills as the most identified skills in the context of uh, Makerspace. So these uh, in-demand skill sets helps uh, students, young learners to uh, improve their minds for the for a future success. So in that sense, uh, we are going to approach these skills within the context of a makerspace that uh, fosters the development of uh, those skills. Uh, so one of the most important aspects of a makerspace is uh, giving the opportunity to students to collaborate and uh, share ideas. Uh, collaboration is the essence of most parts of activities in uh, these spaces. And uh, the exchange of, of information is giving uh, the way to learning. So in fact, in makerspaces, uh, the learning is built through the interactions uh, because collaboration is the, is the essence of the maker work. Uh, so in order to create a project, it is necessary to discuss the possibility and, and obstacles, to share ideas, to manage the time and uh, the functions of the team. 
you have to create frameworks through which the information can be distributed uh, either within uh, the teams uh, or even across uh, the makerspace. Uh, actually, the interactions in the makerspaces can happen not only between the teachers and the students or uh, among students, but uh, also between uh, the students and the tools, uh, the devices and the software that eventually can lead to learning of things. Uh, what is more, make a space foster creativity and uh, innovation through hands-on experimentation. Uh, students uh, have the opportunity to be creative and uh, apply several personalized learning strategies to, to make actual changes to the concepts or, the, or to develop their own ideas, methods or, the, or, product, or products. Uh, so maker spaces are designed to challenge students to, to create and uh, learn through hands-on uh, personalized experiences uh, throughout uh, school years. So hands-on learning activities uh, allow students to, to move from uh, an abstract concept to a real world understanding, uh, practicing on creating solutions to, to real world problems. Uh, problem solving is another uh, essential skill that is included in the design of uh, major activities. Uh, students follow a series of steps to, to discover learning by themselves. So they have to explore, to search, to, to investigate, to find evidence, uh, and eventually solve the problem using the design process uh, in all the artifacts. Uh, they come up with uh, ideas, they plan their solutions. Uh, identifying the tools and uh, several materials needed in, in each case. Uh, they are experimenting. So experimentation and uh, testing and evaluation uh, are parts of uh, the making process. Uh, students learn how to make failure into a learning experience and uh, not become uh, discouraged or uh, frustrated when something uh, does not go as planned. Uh, the combination of uh, having uh, several complex uh, situations in your personal life, uh, along with uh, stressful working environments, is built the needs the need for the development and the growth of skills that are uh, beyond uh, content and uh, thinking skills. So, uh, in a making environment, learners need uh, to to adapt to several uh, roles. Uh, several uh, job uh, responsibilities, uh, schedules and uh, contexts. Uh, they have to set and try to meet uh, their goals with uh, tangible and intangible success criteria. And uh, actually balance short term and long term uh, goals. So they need to utilize time and uh, manage uh, the, work, the workload efficiently. Uh, inspiring others and uh, feeling comfortable with uh, their own uh, skills. And finally, communication, uh, which is included in the interpersonal skills, along with social skills, teamwork, uh, cultural sensitivity, or the diversity. Uh, in a making environment, learners communicate with their peers uh, when they build a project. Uh, as well uh, as they address to the facilitator or the, just the person next to them and actually communicate to them. Uh, so they are engaged in dialogues, uh, they express their opinions, they speculate, they discuss, they, they reason, they, they are engaged in uh, debates and uh, arguments. Uh, but uh, what is the problem? The current make spaces in schools uh, but uh, and uh, in uh, non-formal uh, education claim that they develop uh, these uh, 21st century skills. Uh, the main problem that arises here is the lack of assessment tools to validate these claims. So these skills, since they are high order skills, are not easy assessed, assessed with current uh, traditional uh, tools, uh, just like uh, questionnaires or uh, drill tests. So this kind of testing, uh, traditional testing, uh, that has uh, dominated the assessment process in a traditional pedagogical framework may work well uh, in a traditional classroom, uh, 
for uh, the assessment of uh, skills such as uh, literacy or uh, numeracy, but it seems that they fail to identify and assess what happens in uh, open-ended environments, just like maker spaces, uh, where the students uh, create unique solutions to problems. They interact with peers and uh, act both in the uh, physical and the digital, digital world. So uh, since uh, Makerspace is looking beyond state-wise assessment uh, to broader definitions and measurement of student achievement, it is difficult to use uh, this kind of tools. Uh, it seems that uh, teachers uh, are uh, rethinking assessment uh, in the Makerspace, uh, uh, but uh, how can they recognize student progress in uh, developing uh, 21st century skills and how can they support them? Uh, support them? I think that uh, this difficulty is uh, recognized and uh, um, is exemplified through this uh, authentic quote presented in this uh, slide. Uh, so there was a facilitator in the eCraft to Learn project uh, three years ago in, in uh, Athens that uh, realized that in a makerspace, several things uh, happen simultaneously. Uh, individual and group work, uh, several roles, uh, problems, failures. Uh, and, he, and he or she recognized the, the, the difficulty in, in assessing this kind of, uh, of skills. So in some, in some cases, it is suggested that digital technologies can uh, offer uh, novel methods and solutions to assess 21st century skills uh, in order to support the teachers and the educators in gaining insights to, to their learners' efforts and uh, achievements, either by collecting uh, data or evaluating them and supporting them uh, and eventually providing uh, them the necessary feedback. Uh, so just after the task that we are going to discuss in a while for the uh, 21st century skills, uh, we will present to you the design process of the proposed uh, digital uh, solution specific to the needs of the makerspace and actually after that the solution proposed in order to uh, assess the 21st century skills. So uh, I don't know if there are any questions uh, about uh, these uh, soft skills, soft skills. But if there are no questions, Rene, can we now present the uh, yeah. task that we're going to discuss in the? Yeah, conference? yeah. So you you revealed, Jan, is what is going to happen next. Uh, we have another short task for you. I will share my screen um, right now. Uh, okay, then. Okay, uh, can you see my screen? So, uh, thank you, Yanis. Um, so yes, as Yanis uh, said, uh, we have another uh, short task for you. I will try to present you uh, the context. Um, um, it is actually a reflective task uh, that will um, uh, challenge a bit our thinking around making practices and 21st century skills. And we decided in uh, doing this uh, through uh, authentic quotes out of uh, Young Makers um, uh, reflections, the Young Makers, uh, um, uh, let's say, experiences as these were recorded through interviews. So it was uh, in the summer of uh, 2018. Uh, after a six months of practice in a non-formal maker space in Athens, um, the young men, ma makers were interviewed and were encouraged to talk about their making experiences. Um, so they refer to how they worked, uh, what they did, um, uh, um, how they planned their work, uh, towards creating an artifact, what kind of failures they had, in general, to, to, 
to speak about their experiences, the challenges they faced, the skills they think they gained, uh, and their feelings. Um, we have selected two quotes, and these are, um, the, these are these two quotes that you can see here from uh, Young Maker A, 14 years old, and Young Maker D. For obvious reasons, we don't provide their names, uh, um, their, the students' names, 15 years old, the second one. Um, so the task for you is to go through the statements and to see whether there is a connection to a specific skill. Um, from the ones that Jan is uh, mentioned uh, um, um, earlier. Uh, the time for this is, um, I think, 10 minutes, but if you think that you need more time, you can uh, let me know. Um, again, you will receive a notification message uh, when the room is going to close. Um, the moderator has um, two minutes for summarizing the key points uh, of the discussion. So now in room one, we will have Chrisa to discreetly moderate the discussion. Andre will be in room two and Richard in room three. So uh, I will um, uh, very shortly create these rooms and transfer you there. So um, how, how was it? Uh, um, any update from uh, room one? Uh, I think it was Krisa there. Or... Yeah, that's me. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, there were uh, many thoughts and, and interesting ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, in the first quote, um, the, the skills were more clear, let's say. Uh, so, uh, so some of the skills that were highlighted uh, are problem solving, teamwork, um, the critical thinking, collaboration. Um, also, some... Uh, um, uh, expressions that are included in these uh, quotes, such as uh, uh, conversation, discussion, uh, are um, uh, reflecting the communication skill. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, the expression of ideas. And about the second quote, um, uh, there were uh, thoughts about uh, communication, which is reflected uh, through the, the, the ideas, the, the words that are uh, talking about their own ideas, um, uh, the skill of problem solving were, was also highlighted. Uh, and uh, the most um, uh, interesting part was about creativity because mm -hmm. there were different options. Uh, the one was about uh, that, that, that the hands-on uh, part uh, can be translated, can be perceived as uh, a reflection of creativity, but on the other hand, it can be perceived, uh, it cannot so easily perceived as something that reflects creativity because we don't know uh, what kind of hands-on practice uh, we are talking right. about. Mm -hmm. so that was the, the, I think, the most interesting part for the second quote that was heard in uh, mm -hmm. uh, our room. So, I, I mean, maybe this all... is also connected with the need for, uh, for having a supportive uh, tools for assessing mm -hmm. uh, what is going on in the makerspace. Uh, thank you so much, Chrisa. Um, uh, for your feedback, uh, let's move uh, to room two. Uh, I think it was Andre there. Uh, thank you, Rene. Unfortunately, I have some uh, music uh, as a background noise all of a sudden, but I will oh. try to, uh, to, <laughs> to concentrate here. So we saw the, uh, the two codes together. Uh, we kind of switched back and forth between the two. So the 21st century skills that were identified have been group work, group management, deciding together as a group, 
and uh, working to the, together in a way that creates satisfaction for the group. Mm -hmm. Also, social skills, uh, showing that uh, students were involved uh, deeply in this activity and in working together. Uh, the fact that they wanted to take it home uh, shows that they have been creative, but at the same time, they, they have uh, brought their self into this kind of, I have done this myself and I want to demonstrate it to my family. Uh, at the same time, the quotes show compromising within the group. So trying to collaborate uh, in a way that everybody's ideas uh, are shared, uh, but also coming together. They have, the teachers have identified communication skills and also lots of creativity in mm -hmm. these codes. Uh, also, uh, problem solving. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andre. Thank you. Uh, let's move to room three and Richard. Thanks, uh, Renee. Yeah, we I'll echo the same thoughts as the rest of the groups. We uh, looked through all the quotes, but really we only got time to discuss the first three and uh, the first, the two on the first page, we saw a lot of, yeah, collaboration, communication, problem solving, teamwork, um, and yeah, the ability, the reflection as well, the ability to reflect on your work and see why you thought it was a good idea or why it worked out well uh, was important. Um, we also, yeah, creativity, the ability to express your own ideas. And I think that goes back to something that came from the first breakout room, which is students being able to bring their own ideas to the table and uh, bring their own skill sets to the table. So. Uh, that was important. We were very impressed with the third quote, uh, which was the guy talking about the solar energy and the, the robot and the golden ratio. We were just, <laughs> for a 14 year old, he was, he sounded, he, he's, he, he's got a good future ahead of him. That day, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, we'd, we'd echo the, the, the thoughts of the previous groups about the, the skills on display and the quotes were very interesting to, to read. Thank you so much, uh, Richard, and uh, thank you all for uh, taking part in this uh, in this task. Um, indeed, there are links to to to, um, to the skills that you mentioned, to problem solving, to social skills, communication skills, creativity. Both uh, quotes reflect um, uh, creativity and how this is perceived by the um, the students. Uh, references to teamwork and um, and the challenges that come along, but also aspects of uh, teamwork and collaboration, as Adri said, uh, group uh, management uh, and um, a way to to build a, a good atmosphere in in uh, a good environment in the team, so that uh, in the end all to feel satisfied. Um, uh, yeah, I think uh, you did a, a good uh, job again in, in the breakout rooms. Uh, thank the moderators for bringing the, the points in the plenary. Um, what we have realized working with, uh, uh, with young makers is that getting from nothing to, to something is uh, where the students gain valuable skills, uh, not just uh, of the mechanics of how to make uh, things, uh, to make the thing they want to make, but also in uh, defining um, uh, and managing their um, responsibilities, reflecting upon uh, their learning um, and what they gain as makers and, uh, and learners. Um, so, um, I think that uh, it's a good point now to um, to see uh, the solution that the Assess Make 21 uh, project aims at uh, 
uh, developing the, the, the response to the need for assessment, uh, to, to, to put it in a, in a better way. Um, as Yanni said, in an open-ended environment as this of a makerspace, the need is uh, for assessment of 21st century skill is even more evident. Uh, and the AssessMake21 tool and our team here uh, tries to uh, come up with uh, a, a response to this uh, need. Uh, so um, uh, I'll stop now and uh, it's a good time, I think, to hand you over to Maria Adamo and Andrea Skitsis from Cyprus Interaction Lab. Uh, Maria and Andreas will uh, guide us through the design process of the uh, AssessMake21 uh, tool. Thank you, René. Uh, let me just a minute to share my screen. Sure, Maria. Uh, can you all see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so we, um, we come from the Cyprus Interaction Lab uh, of the Cyprus University of Technology. Um, this is a research lab that focuses on conducting research in educational uh, technology and human, human computer interaction. Um, Andreas is going to start to, to talk about the design process of the SSMAKE 21 tool, and I'm going to continue with the pedagogy of the tool. Thank you, Maria. So in the next few minutes, we're presenting how the SMAKE 21 tool was designed and then in close communication with educators and makerspace facilitators. Uh, this tool was co-designed with the input of the immediate stakeholders, including teachers and makerspace facilitators. We conducted three design thinking workshops with participants from Greece, Cyprus, Sweden, and Ireland. And we collected their needs and their ideas around the assessment of 21st century skills in making context. We also found out more about the making context in their respective countries. Based on this information, we created the initial technical and functional requirements. It's important to mention that these design thinking workshops took place before we started with the design of the tool. We also did two rounds of interviews with both educators and makerspace facilitators. During the interviews, we used the Skillstruck tool, which was mentioned before, as a starting point for the discussion. The first round of interviews took place before the creation of the first design iteration. And the second round of interviews took place after the first design iteration for further feedback and refinement. Out of the design workshops and interviews, we concluded that there are three challenges across all countries. The first one was that the teachers use different teaching approaches in classrooms and maker spaces with respect to working with maker activities. The second one was that the teachers work on maker activities using different durations and frequencies of maker activities. And lastly, the third challenge was that schools have different available technologies. Um, Maria, can you go a uh, few slides yes. back? Yes. Yeah. So okay. in, in respect with the teaching approaches, we had to cater for educators that prefer to use the assessment tool during the classroom, educators that prefer to use the tool at the end of the classroom, and anything in between. Um, with respect to the second challenge, which is the activity duration, um, the activity duration also matters a lot. Some teachers do longer maker activities and frequent ones. Other teachers do shorter and less frequent. For example, they might engage in making activities twice a week or other educators might be doing making activities daily. Uh, lastly, technology availability had differences between the schools. Some have tablets, others have laptops and other desktops and each one with different operating systems. Okay, um, moving on to the conceptual framework that we, um, that we supported the design of the, um, of the assessment 21 tool. Um, it was based on the foundations of constructionism theory and five pillars, as you can see here, maker education, 21st century skills, um, self-reflection theories, gamification and digital apps, and Bloom's taxonomy. In the next slides, we're going to go deeper in each one of these five pillars. 
So um, as you already know, maker-centered learning is uh, used to encourage learning through making. Um, however, an assessment method, um, as we have already discussed um, today, has not been yet developed. Um, assessment in makerspace context should consider the nature of this activity, such as interdisciplinary and multimodal learning. Um, and it is argued that um, with the SSMIC 21, uh, 21 tool, um, we're going to focus on these, uh, uh, on such activities and we're going to support such activities and their assessment. Um, moving on to the 21st century skills, uh, this tool was designed by taking into account the crucial contributions uh, from teachers, uh, of teachers for teachers, as, um, as Andreas explained. Uh, their contribution was documented in three phases uh, fr with uh, from design thinking workshops, uh, interviews, and a thorough literature review of 21st century skills. Um, uh, the, the thorough literature review um, was, uh, was conducted to reach to the five 21st century skills that are assessed through this tool. Um, we have uh, reached um, our aim is to assess the following five skills, uh, like Yanis mentioned earlier, which is which are collaboration, creativity, problem solving, life social skills, and communication. Um, also, assessment twenty one tool was also supported by the self reflection theories. It is evident that making requires high cognitive demands from actively participating students. Uh, when students are immersed in maker-centered learning, they tend to focus less on cognitive monitoring and self-regulation. Uh, as a result, makers reflect less on the development of their learning. Um, with assessment 21 tool, students get to reflect on the development of 21st century skills while making. Um, gamification and digital apps is the fourth pillar that the design of, uh, of this tool was, was based on. The gamified environment in the Assessment 21 tool was designed to have an impact on uh, encouragement, on engagement and learning for students. Uh, there are various gamified learning elements introduced to generate meaningful and valuable results in improving the development and awareness of 21st century skills. Um, you can see the, um, such as levels, badges, content unlocking from one level to the other, and many more that you will experience firsthand tomorrow uh, when using the tool. Uh, lastly, um, uh, from a pedagogical point of view, it was important to develop challenges that are progressing throughout the levels. This was done uh, using uh, Bloom's revised taxonomy. Uh, a user will experience uh, more complicated, um, uh, sorry, a user will experience easy, uh, easier attaining goals in the beginning. And uh, as the user progress through levels, uh, more complicated challenges will require students higher order thinking. Uh, thus challenges are displayed from uh, simple to complex and concrete to abstract. Uh, now Andreas will continue. So as Maria presented, beyond the technological and functional requirements, the tool is also <clears throat> led by theory. With design decisions based on theory, as well as technological and functional requirements, we design a first iteration of the tool. Um, so following our first iterations, we collected feedback through interviews and students' journeys by the stakeholders, educators, and makerspace facilitators. And the overall conclusion of our design process consisted of a research in design and pedagogy, how other tools were designed while taking into account pedagogy, analyze stakeholders' feedback, design cycles and feedback loops, and lastly, evaluation through pilots. And at the end, the design cycles and feedback loops, loops resulted to an interactive prototype of the application, which was further developed in preparation for the pilot studies. You will have the opportunity to experience this tool during the training. Thank you very much. Thank you.
I will just stop sharing now. Thank you very much, uh, Maria and Andreas. Uh, I think uh, you provide uh, the, um, the participants um, um, with an uh, offer them insights on how the SS Make 21 tool was designed and uh, the important role that uh, teachers and uh, educators and makerspace facilitators played uh, in the design process as uh, their input was integrated in the um, different stages of the design. Um, let's uh, move now to, to see how we can enter the Assessmake 21 tool. And uh, Ian O'Keefe from Learnovate will provide us with uh, technical information uh, about the onboarding stage. And, um, he will, he will ensure that we all have working accounts to, to the tool. This is important for the um, uh, training sessions uh, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. So the floor to you, Ian. Thanks, Renee. I'll just share my screen briefly. So hopefully you can, can see my screen. Um, so yeah, so I'm conscious um, this is the last session of, of today, and I'm sure you're, you're all getting very tired. So I won't, um, won't dwell on this too long. We just wanted to really give an opportunity to, to ensure that um, as best we can, we get everybody prepared for the next couple of days when um, hopefully you can start to explore the tools, get a deeper understanding of how the, the Assessmate 21 tools will work. Um, and, um, kind of, address the, the, the appetite that I hope you're, you're building from the, the teaser that uh, Maria and Andreas have given us to, to the design of the tools and how they work. So for the next few minutes, I wanted to just talk about um, some couple, couple of simple things, just as I mentioned, getting, getting us up and running, making sure we, we have accounts that, that allow us to log in and use the, the tools. Um, just a few notes on, from a technical perspective on um, devices and browsers that are supported and so on. Um, and finally then just um, how to, to go forward, how we will hope to, to support you um, as you um, explore the tools over the coming days, how you um, engage and practice with them over the next few weeks as you prepare for, for pilots, if, if you're going to take them forward for pilots, and also then how we will continue to support you um, whilst using the, the tools with your, with your students. Um, so as, as you, you've seen from, from um, Andreas and Maria's presentation, there's, there's two pieces to the, to the puzzle. We, we refer to a a single app, but really it's it's two. There's the, the student experience and the, the educator or teacher experience. Um, the, the starting point for, for us as, as educators is obviously the, the educator or teacher dashboard. And that's what we're gonna hopefully get you, you set up with um, today um, in advance of the, the sessions tomorrow where, where you'll get to, to explore and, and use the tool. So just briefly before we do that, um, some notes on on supports and devices. Um, so um, the experience is predominantly designed for a computer or tablet experience. Um, as Andreas um, talked about, they were the um, primary types of device that we've seen from the engagements with stakeholders. Um, having said that, obviously, um, in some cases, smaller devices, if necessary, may work, but um, there will be limitations if we haven't designed it with those types of smaller devices, such as uh, smartphones in mind, um, so there will be limitations there. Um, in terms of the types of browsers, we, we support a, a wide range. So if you're on a, a Windows device or a, um, an Android tablet, something like um, Chrome or Microsoft Edge would be appropriate. Um, on a, an Apple laptop or tablet, um, such as an iPad, you might be, be using Safari or alternatively something like Chrome. So the one dominant um, browser that I haven't mentioned there is Firefox. Um, so at the moment, unfortunately, we don't fully support this browser. Um, the, the limitation being one of the, the features that, that we see as being very important to the overall student experience being the use of the, um, the camera on a device to capture um, 
example, example examples of, of real world um, use of skills. Um, but if, if the, the camera isn't um, necessarily something that, that you see being useful in your use cases, if, if for example, you see a, a primary use case being just to upload um, example images from the local device that have kept being captured in some other way, and um, well, then this browser could be could be um, utilized if it's if it's something that that is you are limited to using. But but certainly we would um, be very open to to talking with you after this session about your, your needs in the specific context. If if something like Firefox is a is a requirement for you. So then, just briefly to mention around languages. So the application has been um, translated into. The, the three different languages that we're, we're evaluating the tool in, so Greek, English, and Swedish, um, are continuously improving the translations within the tool. So um, forgive us if there are some little um, mistakes or so on, but we're very happy to, to get your feedback on those. And we are updating them on a, on a almost daily basis to, to improve those translations and, and ensure that they are um, as natural and intuitive to use um, by both you and your students. So in terms of, of getting started, so, so as an educator, as, as somebody who's going to be engaging with students, the starting point is, is the educator dashboard. Um, you should have by now this evening received an email from us um, with some um, details of how you can log into the tool. Um, so what we'd like to do now is invite you to, to check your email um, make sure you got that email from us um, and then see if you can can access the, the educator dashboard and um, log in with those credentials um, so that you're prepared for, for the session tomorrow when we'll actually um, go into some, some detail on, on what the tool can do and how you will use it um, in, your, in your classroom um, and also then give you some, an opportunity with that knowledge to, to utilize the tool. So, so for now, um, we, we'd only like to invite you just to, to make sure that the, um, the account details that you have work, and if not, um, to, to give us an opportunity to, to help you. Um, so obviously logging in that the main things you'll need are um, your email address, um, which for those of you who have um, shared that with your local um, contact point on the project previously, we, we hopefully have sent that um, details to you. If not, if you haven't received an email, please, please let us know. Um, we do have a number of, of temporary or um, demo accounts that we can share with you today, but we, we'd be very keen to, to ensure that you have the, um, have an account that you can use going forward. Um, so with the, the correct email address and so on. Um, so at this time, I, I'd like to just ask you to, to go check your email. Um, and see, see if, if you did receive that and um, try to log in with the, um, the address that, that was provided. Um, I'll paste it in the chat here now as well, just to make sure you have it in a convenient location. So what if you, you didn't, um, so whilst everybody's doing that, if you, if you didn't get an, an email from us um, in the last hour or so, um, what can you do? So I'd like to, to ask you in, in Zoom, if you could just um, let us know, maybe just raise your hand um, so we can, we can take note of that um, and maybe help you out if, if in the next few minutes. Um, So I'm seeing lots of uh, messages in, in the chat saying that things are going well. So that's very positive. Um, don't, again, don't, don't worry too much about the, the details of, of the features of the tools. We will um, guide you through that in, in the next sessions um, and give you a, a good opportunity to, um, to utilize that. Sorry, I'm pausing as, I, as I'm seeing these messages come through. Um, I think and there are two or three people that didn't get the email. Uh, it's Helen Brick. Okay. 
Ian, is it possible it went to spam into the spam folder? Um, it's. I think it's definitely the case that that there, the, um, certainly Helen and um, a couple of the others that that I'm seeing that didn't get an email, um, Maria, um, your names aren't aren't um familiar to me. So definitely, I think that there are instances where we we didn't set up an account, but we can definitely, um do that for you in advance of, of tomorrow's session. Um, perhaps if you if you want to, Helen, you shared your, your email de contact details. Maria, if you could maybe do the same, we can we can set that up and make sure you're ready to go for, for the session tomorrow. Definitely, we can do this. Yes, in the morning tomorrow. Okay, uh, so. There is also a, um, uh, question about the um, the password if they can change the password yeah so so uh, yeah um the apologies the, the passwords are are quite long and um, random um so so quite good strong passwords but but not the easiest thing to remember or keep track of and um, unfortunately we don't have a, a password changing feature in the tool at the moment but we can definitely um help you out by by sent by resetting that to something a little bit more um intuitive or user-friendly and um, obviously not something that you use um, regularly yourself for your, your personal details but um, we can we can follow up with you Elena and, and um, help you out there. So I'm not seeing too many, thankfully not too many people who are, who are missing accounts but um, just just a couple and um, so I might just um, finally um, wrap up for today in terms for, for myself anyway and um, so as we mentioned um, we don't want you to, to necessarily have to do anything um, now with those accounts and um, we'll, we'll guide you through that experience tomorrow um, so you can you can relax and, and take a breather um, and then just in terms of going forward from today in terms of getting support so obviously you have the, the local or, or national um, project partner who's been working with you already who's uh, you've been talking to about participating in these training sessions and um, you can contact them directly uh, if that's convenient um, we also have a, a dedicated support email address um, which we will be able to to help you more directly with with anything that's specifically technical in terms of access to the tools issues you have with, with using the tool either yourself or with your students and um, so so non um trial related or pedagogy related um, aspects of, of the tool, we, we can support you at that email address. Um, um, but feel free to use any of those mechanisms to, to contact um, us and um, we'll, we'll do our utmost to, to resolve any issues that you have um, as quickly as possible. We're, we're very keen to, to ensure that you have as, as good an experience with using the tool as, as is possible. So that's that's everything I wanted to, to say for today. Um, hopefully you'll you'll have lots of questions. I know following the um, the, the walkthroughs of the tools and, and getting to use the tools over the next couple of days. Um, so again, feel free to um, to raise any questions you have with us. Um, in the future, we have a session um, on the third day for um, for discussing the, the tools in general. But but please feel free to to reach out to us. Um, independent of that um, and ask any questions um, about anything related to the tools or the use of the tools. Mm, I think Maria is, um, yes, Maria, please go on. There is a question from Maria. Uh, we cannot hear you, Maria. Okay. Uh, I see that uh, she has raised the, the hand, but uh, perhaps it was from uh, the previous uh, uh, part of the discussion. Okay. Um, so let me share my screen. Um, We are uh, we're pretty much on time, I think. Uh, uh, this bring us to the end of the training for for today. Uh, hope you find uh, find it useful. 
um, uh, personally, I feel that it was a constructive to our uh, activity. It was uh, um, I, I was very happy to he to hear your thoughts and your reflections on uh, the task that we had today. Um, in overall, I think we had the chance to go through the basics of maker education uh, to see what a maker space is and what a maker activity project uh, looks like. Uh, and to reflect upon the 21st century skills and uh, identify links to making uh, practices. Uh, we brought forward the need for assessment in makerspace context. And um, um, we got also information on how the Assess Make 21 tool was designed, uh, uh, which need uh, tries to, to, to cover and the important role that the teachers uh, feedback uh, played in their design of the tool. And uh, also we now know that um, uh, most of you have access to the tool and we will take care of um, uh, the two more accounts that needs to be uh, um, uh, fixed or we will take care of this. Um, that's uh, what is important for, for tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we will focus on, on the tool itself and how you can uh, use it. Uh, so yes, uh, we are uh, pretty much on time. Unless there are uh, any other questions, uh, uh, we're looking forward to meeting you all again tomorrow. Um, same place, uh, same hour. Um, and many thanks for your participation and your contribution uh, so far. It is, it is much appreciated. Uh, for any issue that may emerge, uh, feel free to directly get in contact with me. Um, and, and if there are, uh, are there any questions? Okay. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, Thank you again very much. And uh, uh, I really look forward to uh, meeting you again tomorrow. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye.